Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today as we have this workshop regarding on how to uh, respond to an RFP, request for proposals. So at this time, I will ask everyone to please turn off your electronic devices and just to ensure that we are not interrupted during this. Um, any questions you might have, I ask you to please write them down and we'll wait until the end of the session to proceed with any questions that you might have. So some tips for finding bid opportunities with the City of Chicago. So bids valued over $100,000 and RFPs, they're, they're publicly advertised in the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, all bids and RFPs, regardless of value, uh, are posted on our City of Chicago Department of Procurement website, which is www.cityofchicago.org backslash bids. So you can view them there and then download them, um, and that is updated on a weekly schedule. The bid opportunities are also posted um, online and within our bid and bond room here. Um, they are accessible through CD-ROM pickup or hard copy in the bid and bond room. Um, I'll mention a couple of things that Victoria has already kind of touched on just as a, to go over it a little bit more. So she mentioned the City of Chicago buy-in plan, which is a really good resource for everyone who um, would like to kind of see. It's kind of something that we would consider a catalog of sorts where you will see the forecasted projects or bids that the city of Chicago departments and the sister agencies are looking um, to buy or purchase within the next four quarters. So it's a yearly forecast catalog. It's a really good resource for everyone to kind of see um, what's upcoming and what the city is looking to purchase. So that's definitely a good resource for everyone. Um, as far as the pre-bid conferences, uh, those are really good opportunities for everyone to network with each other they are not all necessarily mandatory, although some may be, and it'll be listed on the RFP or a bid if it is or if it is not. But that's definitely a good resource for you to also kind of network and meet any other potential um, primes, bidders, or partner or subcontract with anyone else. Um, it's a good way to learn about projects and bids. So in the event, though, that you are unable to attend the pre-bid conference, uh, we have something that's called the bid takeout list. So that list, uh, which is also held here within the bid and bond room, and you can also find on the DPS website, will let you know if you were unable to come or if you would like a copy on who attended the pre-submittal conference, who attended the pre-bid conference, um, and that will let you know who was here. So that's also a good resource for you of what we have. So, what is an RFP or a competitive bid? So, the request for proposals and RFPs, um, they're the method of procurement that we use for service consultants, um, for any new projects or professional services. It kind of helps us outline the project that the city wants to do, and it reflects the certain parameters that we have for that specific project, um, and it's our way of, of the city producing the RFP and letting you know what that project is or what we're looking for. It's also project specific. Um, so this is something that when the city does not have in-house technical experts or resources, this is the method that we procure um, to get these services. So an example of that would be like project management services. So let's say that that would be something that we would be able to consider an RFP. Um, so it describes the objectives um, but doesn't specify it in detail on how the job will be done. For example, on a daily basis, um, that's what the RFP would do. A competitive bid is a method for DPS to procure or purchase supplies, equipment, maintenance, repair services, and that is very, very detailed specific. Um, it's structured specific, so it has the quantities, a blanket indefinite quantity or usage, goods and services, so, for example, indefinite usage would be, let's say, uh, the city wants to purchase topsoil, and there's an estimated quantity of how much topsoil the city wants to procure, but that can also kind of be exceeded. 
So that's what we mean by indefinite quanti quantities. The proposal page line items um, have a definite use unit of measure and specific or estimated quantities, as I mentioned as well. So some additional differences of RFPs and competitive bids. So a bid spec details every aspect of the product or service. And the RFP, as I mentioned before, it de defines the project objectives and the scope of service parameters that we have. But it's not necessarily in detail um, on how the performances or how we accomplish or perform the required services. Um, once a response is received, uh, there is an evaluation committee that's formed, and that committee uh, has these defined guidelines that they set before reviewing any of the submittals. So the response of the RFP is then vetted through that evaluation committee team. So the RFP is made up of an evaluation committee, which is various stakeholders within the user departments. So any scoring or any weights that are determined, um, that is done before any responses or submittals are received. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background about the evaluation committee. Um, for the competitive bid, the contract award will go to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. So the difference on um, an RFP is that not necessarily if you are the lowest responsive, responsible bidder for that, the evaluation committee has var various um, line items that they'll review as part of the guidelines, and you're not necessarily uh, the highest qualified. So that would be a little bit slightly different of an RFP and a bid, because the bid will definitely, uh, is more towards the lowest responsible and responsive bidder. Um, so price is the primary factor in a bid, just to kind of, you know, that's a little bit of a difference. And for the RFP, the vendor selection goes to the highest rated respondent, not the lowest price, although the price can also be negotiated for an RFP. So uh, the handout, everyone, has a copy of the handout? Okay, so this is what the city would consider our solicitation that we post online in the Chicago Sun-Times here with the Bid and Bond Room. This specific example that I gave to everyone is a city-funded project. Um, an important item to note on anything that you would like to respond to is to ensure that you always note and know your specification number because there's hundreds and thousands of bids that um, are posted online or posted here. So if you ever need to call or email to identify any questions you might have or further information, it's really important that you know what your specification number would be for your project. Um, the front page will let you know kind of when the pre-proposal conference is, if there is one, if it's mandatory or not, and then kind of all the way at the bottom what the due date is of when your proposals would be due. So the RFP is standardized depending on what the funding would be. So any city funded or state federal funding will drive what some of the requirements would be for the RFP. So it's definitely very important to kind of review this and see if it's city funded, federally funded, because some of the requirements it would be driven through, that would determine what the RFP is driven by. For example, on page 73, so we'll talk about MBE and WBE. That's minority business enterprises and women business enterprises. So you'll notice on the exhibit of any RFP that you pick up, it will kind of let you know what the MBE goal is and the WBE contract goal is. Our standard for the city of Chicago is 25% and 5%. However, there are times when the MBE, WBE goals can vary, and that's dependent on the user department. They would let us know if it's a niche project or if there's a maintenance equipment involved or there's not enough MBE, WBE firms. So even though the standard is 25% and 5%, as you notice like with this example that you guys have, this one is 10% and 5%. And it depends like on, on what the situation was for this specific RFP.
as you mentioned, they're typically all city funded, and if they're not, it will be notified on the R you'll be able to see it on the RFP or on um, the PSA, which is one of the exhibits at the end of the solicitation, will have on the top right if it's city funded or federally funded. So that's an additional resource for you to look at as well. Uh, the DBE are the disadvantaged business enterprise participation goals, which uh, will require the state and federal grant funds. That's okay. <laughs> so now we're going to go over the proposal of the format. Um, you can kind of reference on page seven of the RFP. We'll go over a little bit of the format of the proposals. So the city asks that you submit and prepare your solicitation or your response on an eight and a half by 11 letter size paper, printed, double-sided. We also ask that it is uh, placed on recycled paper. Um, paper clips, binder clips are completely okay. Many times a lot of the binders, they're really nice, they come in in beautiful formats and just wound, but unfortunately sometimes we'd have to take that apart because the EC committee would need to review that, so it doesn't need to be um, this beautiful elaborate binder, paper clips, binder clips are absolutely okay. You can submit an original please and a required copy. Uh, a lot of times, I'll also mention this, we'll have the number of proposals that are to be submitted. So it'll say 10, uh, one original and let's say five hard copies and then in addition to that we'll ask for one redacted copy. So please ensure that you submit um, the exact amount required as part of your RFP. It's really important that the sections are properly separated and labeled, and as we proceed, you'll see exactly why it's really important to kind of have that organized and tabbed, and um, you'll see how important that is once we uh, proceed a little bit further. Proposals must also be clear, concise, and well-organized. So your proposal content, um, so w the, some of the content that is required or needed is your cover letter. So your cover letter must be signed by an authorized representative. Uh, the number of years that your company has been in business must be listed on the cover letter. The identity and the of the legal name, the address of your headquarters, your legal form, um, who the principal contact for your proposal would be, or the any oral presentations or negotiations, your firm's commitment to comply with MBE and WBU requirements, a statement of any objections or comments to the professional service agreement. So when you receive or when you take out an RFP list, uh, it, that's also about 100. These documents are pretty, pretty hefty. So it's, every RFP will have an example of that exhibit. So we definitely recommend for you to review before your submittal, and if you have any objections to that sample professional service agreement, um, please note that on your cover letter. We might also have various changes to an RFP. It can be scope changes, it could be due date changes of when your proposals are due. Um, if that's the case, or if there's any changes to, your, to the solicitation that the city has out there, we will proceed with something that we call an addendum, and that's why it's also really important for us to ask you to please become a document holder here in the bid and bond room um, for a specific spec that you're interested in. Because in the event there are any changes to the RFP or there's any, um, any changes whatsoever with the date or the scope, if you remain a document holder of that spec, any correspondence that the, that, that specific SPS, Senior Procurement Specialist, has, and you are on that takeout list, you will receive that correspondence. So it's really important because we've received proposals that have come in where there were changes made um, to a scope and then your proposal will come in and it, that addendum, you weren't the takeout holder so you didn't see that change, so your solicitation doesn't really match what we were asking for. So it's really important to you to be up to date and ensure that you are on the takeout list. You get email bid and bond or you can see them here or you can call. 
and make sure you're listed so that you have any addendums moving forward and you receive any information that we need. Your executive summary must also address how your proposal will achieve the city's objectives. So whatever your strategy and methodology to be successfully implementing or managing the project that the city's asking for, the capacity to perform um, or approach project management satisfying the scope of services, the professional qualifications and specialized experience of the respondent and your team members. So for example, for this, this specific sample that you have, this RFP, they are asking for at least five years of experience in auto pound facility property management and operations management of towing ve vehicles or related services with municipalities and written proof of evidence of such experience. So it's important for you to also kind of note what we're looking for and that you provide the professional qualifications and the specialized experience that's asked for that particular RFP. Your company profile, which will identify the participants in your respondents team. Your references, so we're, we're moving from page nine to page 10. So who your company references would be, uh, we, we ask at least three references, preferably from a municipality or government agency related to the contract or a similar scope and magnitude. The capacity of your firm to perform the city project, with, so the capacity to perform within the city's timeline, um, the effect and effect dedicated resources committed to this project the summary of any of your current or future projects and your commitments to include the completion dates. We also ask for a sample of your business license or your authority to do business in Illinois. So appropriate licenses, certificates required uh, for an individual or entity performing the services. Your staffing plan and local availability of your key personnel. So a summary of the individuals who will be dedicated to the services. Your implementation management plan and approach. So any comprehensive and detailed overall plan for implementing the scope of services for the specific RFP. Your approach to implementing the project. your organiza organizational chart, or your organization chart. Uh, any dedicated resources to this particular RFP, which would include any equipment, hardware, software technologies, um, your itemized cost proposal, we're on page 16. So as far as your cost proposal, it's really important that you also submit your pricing in the format that is given within each individual RFP to keep it concise and streamlined across the board of all proposals. So we ask you to please ensure that you provide your cost proposal in the exact format that the city has in the RFP and the way that it's outlined in, in the designated exhibit. So for the minority and women business enterprises commitment, you must submit and complete the forms that are attached to the RFP, and that would include a Schedule D1 or obtain a separate Schedule C1 completed and signed for each proposed MBE and WBE firm. On page 17. Your financial statements. So we asked you to provide audited financial statements for the last three years. We ask for you to complete an economic disclosure statement. The economic disclosure statement, the EDS, is the online system that the city has. Um, and this online economic disclosure statement asks for a lot of background information of your firm, or ownership information, I should say. So any, who your parent ownerships are, who your grandparent ownerships are, individual ownerships are. So it's very, very detailed. Um, in regards to the background of your firm and the ownership. And this is done because it helps the city have a very good picture of who the, the city is doing business with. 
So it's very important for you to complete your EDS and have that certificate of filing with your proposal. Any legal actions. So you would have to list a brief description of all material <coughs> legal actions for the past five years. Your insurance. So for the insurance, we would need a statement that your firm can actually comply with the insurance requirements. So the insurance certificate of insurance is not necessarily needed at the time of your submittal, but if your firm at the point of award, so if your firm is chosen, selected, negotiated, and you are awarded the contract, at that time of contract award is when you will be asked to provide the certificate of insurance. So when you do submit the proposal, however, we'll need a statement of your firm complying with the city requirements. And then at contract award is when we would need the evidence of insurance. So now we will discuss evaluating proposals. So remember how I previously said that the evaluation committee, um, at this point, the criteria, the scoring, and the methodology for all that is already predetermined. So that's done prior to the evaluation committee team reviewing any of the submissions. Um, once the evaluation committee um, is ready to do the evaluation process, the evaluation process is broken down into three phases. So on page 20, it gives, it gives you more information on that. So the first phase of the evaluation, or the proposal evaluations, is the preliminary proposal assessment. So in phase one, as we discussed earlier, all the required content, in phase one is when the evaluation committee team will go through all of the required content. It's kind of the checklist that we'll use and make sure that all the required content that we have noted in the RFP will go firm by firm, submission by submission, and ensure that all the required content is part of your package. If at any moment, um, if there's anything incomplete or any missing items, it'll be at the discretion of the evaluation committee to potentially reject your submission and consider you non-responsive. Um, so it's really important to ensure that all your required content is in, because at phase one, We'll do the checklist, and if you miss anything, it can definitely eliminate you, and you, the evaluation committee will not even review your submittal at the phase two. So the phase two is the in-depth review of the proposal. That's where the evaluation committee will go in and review more in-depth of what your proposal was. Phase three is what would be considered the site visit, oral presentations, or potentially even operations demonstrations. Uh, that is optional. It's at um, the discretion of the evaluation committee if they choose to shortlist your firm, because that's when the shortlist firms would be determined and if your firm is considered that. And we would like for you to come back and ask a couple of questions regarding um, a presentation or product system demonstration or we need any more clarification and in any information of your proposal or ask you any additional questions, it's in phase three that we would do that. So now for phase two, the evaluation criteria. So the evaluation committee will review your ability to provide all, your, all the services, the qualifications and experience, page 21, the quality comprehensiveness and adequacy of the proposed implementation plan, your cost proposal and compensation schedule, your MBE and WBE plan, any legal actions, the financial stability of your firm, your ability to uh, have compliance with laws and ordinances and statutes, and the degree of you uh, being respondent and accepting the city's terms and conditions. And this is where we ask you again to review the PSA, Professional Service Agreement, that's an exhibit. So if a respondent takes any material objections 
potentially to the city terms and conditions, you may be found non-responsive. That's just something to note. So it's really important to you to review it, and if you have any objections to it, just let us know within your um, cover letter. Any conflict of interest? Now we'll go over some of the tips for preparing your RFP. So we ask again, can't emphasize it enough, to please read the entire RFP document, including the professional service agreement, which is the additional exhibit. Um, follow the format and content instructions. There's also usually a deadline to ask any questions, so please pay attention to that. So the deadline to ask questions is usually found You know what, I'm gonna back up a little. Regarding communication as well, I'll mention this now. So respondents are asked to communicate directly and only with the Department of Procurement Services. So the city asks that you please stay with one point of contact, which would be the senior procurement specialist for that specific RFP. I've already mentioned the pre-proposal um, or pre-bid conferences, those are mandatory non-mandatory. This one specifically actually was mandatory. So there usually is a deadline. So you'll find that under the general information and guidelines. So if there's any deadline to submit any questions that you might have prior to the pre-submittal or after the pre-submittal if you're not able to attend, um, that's where it will tell you what date you have until to send any questions you might have to that specific SPS. And that is also has to be in writing via email. Be responsive to the RFP submittal requirements. So again, please submit all of the required information and documents. Please ensure that you use the cost proposal format that we provide you within the RFP. Be a responsible vendor. So verify that your company has the ability and the capacity to perform your, and your proposal meets each specified requirement that we have. If you have a mandatory requirement, avoid taking exceptions to the requirement, and it might be a result of a proposal rejection. But again, if you, ha if, if you do have an object objection to anything, just note it in your cover letter. We will review it with our legal team, and if we're able to accommodate it, we'll let you know. If we absolutely cannot, then we'll let you know as well, but we encourage you, if you do have anything, to please put it down. So some additional tips for preparing the RFP proposal. So the exhibit form, if you notice, uh, on the third page, it shows you all the exhibits. So some of the exhibits are gonna be universally the same for every RFP. But there, there will be other ones, depending on what the RFP is asking for, that you'll find like different variants of exhibits. Like for example, this one, so some of the universal exhibits that you'll find in every RFP is the company profile, the company references and client information, the special conditions, the MBEWB commitment, the online EDS instructions, and the contract and insurance requirements. So those are universally found on every RFP. But if you notice for this one, since it's specifically for impound facility management, it has a couple of additional exhibits, like the boot release, intentionally omitted, and other information, data protection, policy. But initially, those exhibits will be universal across the board. So it's definitely important to kind of review the exhibits and make sure that your, your uh, firm would be able to comply with that as well. I didn't print out the exhibit of the professional service agreement just because it's also a pretty, a pretty thick uh, copy, but you'll find it online if you go on our cityofchicago.org backslash bids. It'll show you the solicitation and then right under that, it can, 
it's either part of the solicitation or right under it noted as an exhibit. We ask that you please again verify the existence of any addendums issued. It's really important for you, again, I'll emphasize it one more time, to please ensure that you're registered as a document holder with a bid and bond room, just so that ensures that you receive any up-to-date information per pertaining to any of the RFPs that you are looking to bid for. So register here, <laughs> pretty much. Please ensure that you submit your proposal on time in a complete sealed package, no later than 4 o'clock Central Standard Time, the bid and bond room. If there is a variance or a different time, please make sure that that's noted in your RFP. It'll let you know. No late proposals. Um, late proposals may be rejected by the Chief Procurement Officer. So it's very important that you ensure that your proposal is in, and it is actually submitted here in the bid and bond room. There have been instances where we've received them up on our room 806, and they're actually supposed to come down here. They keep it behind until it's the date of the bid closing or bid opening, so it's sealed, secure, stays here. Nobody sees it until that date comes, and then they submit it to us upstairs. It's really important that you have it on time and down here. Your cover letter must be signed by an authorized officer. Acknowledge any addendum issued in your cover letter. Please pay attention to any additional instructions on the RFP for your submission requirements. Submit your EDS certificate of filing. And we recommend that when you review an RFP through the required content, make a checklist of it for yourself just so that you put your checklist together of what's required and that will kind of have a second layer for you to make sure that you have everything that you need to submit as part of your package. So proposal evaluation and award. So respond so if you respond to an RFP that information is posted online under something that we, are, we call bid tabulations. So that will only have the name of the respondent and when it was submitted. So if you're looking to see, oh, who responded to this particular RFP, um, that information will be online. However, no other information outside of putting under the bid tabulations the name of the respondent and when it was submitted will be um, given to the public until after the contract is awarded and completed. All Freedom of Information Act requests are going to be received and held here until after the contract is awarded. That's also something that we will not be able to do until after the contract award is finalized. Debriefing meeting can also be requested if you respond to an RFP and you would like to be debriefed at the end. Let's say you may not have been selected. You can also request that in writing to the Chief Procurement Officer. And that, again, will also not be done until after the contract award is finalized. So you also have that, that option. As we discussed earlier, the evaluation committee evaluates the proposals in those three phases. So that phase one is the checklist of your responsiveness, your proposal evaluation, and phase three, the site visits, demonstrations, or oral presentations, which is, if necessary, or optional. So once determinations are made for the RFP, a vendor selected and declination letters are sent to the respondents. So if you respond to an RFP or a bid or to an RFP, you'll receive a formal notification whether, you are, whether your proposal was selected or rejected. So we will send you a formal letter letting you know if your firm is selected or rejected. So the contract award is contingent on the successful negotiation of terms and prices. So this is done after we review your EDS and make sure that everything is there, your insurance, uh, contract negotiations. And the RFP may allow multiple awards by service category or separate projects. Like we said, like for example, if it's a RFP for property management, there can be 
various depending on, on if that is something for that specific RFP. So now I'll open it up to you guys. You guys have any questions you'd like to ask us? I have my expert here. Does he have any? If you guys have any questions, this is the time to ask. Right. Mandatory? Or, oh, uh, video blog. YouTube? I know the workshops definitely are streamed on YouTube and the bid openings are, are also recorded and on YouTube. But as far as the pre-submittal, pre-bid conferences, um, we're not necessarily all of them are, no. We do videotape them. We do video. Mm -hmm. No, so, so the, if it's city funded, state funded, or federally funded, the PSA exhibit is where you would see it on the top right. It would say city funded, federal funded, multi-funding. That's where you'll see. And that drives kind of the requirements for the RFP. And be.
other questions? Why does C dot not add returns? They should be they should be listed. Yeah. Right. They should be. Transportation. That's what they're under. Yeah. So it's city. Right. Uh, what I would suggest transportation. If you if you go to our home page, we have links to other departments. <coughs> so if you can go to the C dot website for the construction program, you will see, you know, they'll post those projects that are well for information on the web. So if you're interested in C dot projects, you can go directly to their website. But you will also and it's for four quarters, right? So it's a year forecast of what potentially will be coming up under the buying plan. 12 to 15 months. Every few months. So you guys have the latest version, so it's most up to date. The city's catalog. <laughs> It's Really good advice.
Any more questions? That's it. Well, thank you for coming. We ask everyone. Evaluation form, please. Thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting.